Okay. Um, I checked uh, Blackboard and homeworks 2.7 and 2.8 were still being graded. The solution for homework 2.8 went live like a minute ago, as well as the solution to homework 2.9. Okay. So we have all the solutions posted for all the homeworks that have been assigned for this semester. Um, a, a couple things I will mention, because I'm sure you all will be okay with this. So we obviously are not assigning a homework today. We're not assigning a homework Friday. And we're not going to assign a homework on Monday. When we come back on Monday, we're going to start Bolted Connections. But that first lecture is just going to be a lot of information. And I'm just going to wait on doing the homework. So you get like a week off of homework from me. You need a break in other classes. Just, you know, don't hold back. Tell us how you really feel. This is all a bunch of junk. No. <laughs> You're like, well, if you really want to hear, slams the book down, stands up, like, let me give you my speech. Um, <laughs> so, um, We've got our exam review coming up. I did go ahead and put the grade breakdown here because I did want to make a point that the exams in this class, this is one of my few classes that I teach where the exams are not equally weighted. Um, the reason why is because of just the amount of material that gets covered on one exam. When we start getting into bolted connections and welded connections, you're going to see what I mean, that those topics are actually pretty short. Um, but they go well together. So for a second exam, it, it's kind of nice to have bolts and welds just on one exam. Like if I were to try and throw columns onto it, then it starts to get to be a lot, right? So um, bolts and welds together on one exam is just kind of, it, it works well together, but it's kind of small. So that's why that one's worth 15. Uh, this exam's worth 20. And then the final, columns and beams. Columns and beams go well together because they, they use a lot of design aids that kind of have some similarities, um, but it is a slightly beefier, so that's why it's worth more. Um, so that's, that's sort of the grade breakdown. Let's get into the uh, review for the exam, and then you know how it is. It, the floor is yours to ask whatever questions that you want. Um, so first off, let's talk about logistics. Um, the uh, so my exams in here are I mean, y'all have had me for class. This is y'all get probably get the drill at this point. So it's going to be um, a series of conceptual questions and then two to three computational problems. Again, I don't design the exams to be time sensitive. Um, I, I I don't like exams that are you know seeing how fast you can write numbers down. I want them to be doable exams. Now, it's not to say I'm not going to challenge you, but, I mean, I, I, um, uh, there's probably going to be, you know, like the slight curveball here and there, but this isn't going to be, you know, okay, here's a column, design a column. I mean, it's going to be within the, the confines of what we've talked about. Um, it's an open book exam. So by open book, I mean your manual. You really need your manual for the exam, so bring it. Um, it's closed notes, but you can have a formula sheet. I'm going to talk about that here in a second. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I would say a straight edge probably wouldn't hurt if you're drawing any figures. I think you've probably learned by now that steel design is a, um, a, a science that tends to require some diagrams and some, some schematics. So if you have a straight edge, probably isn't the worst idea in the world, but it's not super necessary. Um, for the formula sheet, you can put whatever you want on it. Um, I really tend to strongly suggest that you don't put fully worked out problems. Uh, the main reason for that is this is a class, probably more than any other, where if you put fully worked out problems on the formula sheet, next thing you know, you're pulling a flange thickness from the formula sheet instead of the manual, and now you, your problem doesn't make any sense because you're using the wrong value. So this is, again, a lot of the rules that I use in later classes tended to derive from this, from steel design. So, um, so I, that's why I don't want to see any fully worked out problems. Make sure you put your name on the formula sheet because um, so, I'm going to collect them after the exam. And the big thing is I do want the formula sheet to be prepared by you. Okay. So what that means is I don't care if you handwrite the formula sheet. I don't care if you use a word processor. I don't even mind if you snip out certain components from the slides onto the formula sheet. But what I don't want to see is just 
snap a bunch of screenshot slides, hit print. Because I think you actually need to go through the process of making it. By going through the process of making it, you categorize your thoughts and it, and it makes the step, like by making the formula sheet, you're studying. That's, that's what you're doing. Um, let's talk about the topics on the exam. So uh, this is what's covered on the exam. So first off, for the fundamentals, this was the stuff that we did you know, around the first week of the semester. Make sure you can generally describe the process of structural engineering and that you understand the difference between ASD and LRFD. Um, but the star of the show is obviously tension members. And really, if you start lumping everything that we've talked about, you can summarize it in some pretty simple bullets. So make sure that you can analyze tension members according to the following limit states. So gross section yielding, net section fracture, block shear rupture, Slenderness limits. Um, make sure that you can design those sections for prescribed loadings. And by design, I mean that the most economical sections are the ones of the lightest weight. And finally, make sure that you can select economical threaded rods uh, for prescribed loadings. Um, and then the rest of the, uh, the slideshow is sort of the greatest hits from the, uh, the past uh, few lectures. So. You know, in LRFD, again, we're dealing in factored loads and factored resistances. So the idea is that on the resistance side, we take the uh, nominal resistance, um, which is what we're computing based off of mechanics and empirical relationships, and then we then adjust that by an appropriate resistance factor. So, for example, for gross section yielding, it was 0.9. For net section fracture, it was 0.75 to, uh, to yield a factored resistance. So we deal with a factored resistance and then a factored load. On the load side, what we're doing is we're taking each of those service loads, the dead load, live load, snow load, what have you, et cetera, and we're plugging those into those statistically calibrated load combinations to yield a factored load. And we use the biggest factored uh, load from those load combinations. And as long as the resistances are greater than or equal to the loads, then we know the structure is safe uh, for use by the public. Um, for the load combinations, we have seven of them, but really the star of the show for our purposes are the first two, simply because all elements tend to um, need to be designed according to uh, section or uh, combos one or two. Uh, only some elements in a structure are going to resist wind, only some elements are going to resist snow, only some are going to resist earthquakes, but all elements tend to have to withstand their own self-weight and whatever occupancy they're, they're used for. We don't build structures for nothing. They have to support something. All right. Um, our limit state expressions, so um, we have three uh, strength limit states that we've been looking at. Uh, gross section yielding, net section fracture, and then our block shear rupture, which is coming uh, up later. Um, for Gross section yielding and net section fracture, we need areas, the gross area and the net area. We also need the shear lag factor. Uh, so this is sort of the summary of all of the uh, parameters that we need to compute. Um, FY and FU, we can get from the manual. We can get from table 2-4 for rolled shapes and table 2-5 for plates. Um, some of the values um, in these tables are listed as ranges. Remember, we always use the lower value because um, that's more conservative. Uh, for net area, our complete expression for net area is that in order to compute the net area for a bolted connection, we take the gross area, we subtract all the area loss due to the presence of bolts, so that's the sum of the diameter, the effective diameters of the hole times the thickness. And remember, we get the hole diameter, we take the bolt diameter, and we add an eighth of an inch. Uh, but then we add any necessary stagger factors. So stagger is computed as S squared T over 4G. Um, and that's for any diagonal path between two bulb holes, S being the longitudinal spacing, G being the transverse spacing. And that's the start of the show for bolted connections. For welded connections, it's pretty easy. The net area and the gross area are the same because you're not removing any material from the member to, uh, 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 to generate the connection. <coughs> Shear lag factors we get out of the spec. That's from Chapter D, specifically Table D 3.1 on page 16.1-30. This is just a snapshot of that table, and it's an incomplete snapshot at best. Yes, sir? Uh, the theory is about lack of loading. Technically, wouldn't it like, be larger because you're adding material, or is it just worth so little? It wouldn't, like... That's a good question, and, and it'll be easier to discuss that in more detail when we actually get to welded connections. Uh, but because when we're looking at welded connections, we look at the capacity of both the weld metal and the base metal. But for the purposes of analyzing the member as a whole, we just consider the area of the member. That, that, that's a good question. 
But we'll get to weld metal capacity and base metal capacity later when we get to, to welding connections. That, that, that's a good question. Um, going back to shear lag factors, so uh, this table, this snapshot is incomplete because there's more cases that are, that are listed here on the slide. There's uh, eight of them. Um, and it's possible that multiple cases can apply to a given connection. You need to cycle through that table and apply all of the ones that are applicable. Um, this is a table that's probably worth bookmarking in your manual. And a common question I get at this point is how many bookmarks should we have? I would argue that in the spec, you should probably tab this one and you should probably tab this one. Okay. Um, Beyond that, if you wanted to tab a few of the rolled shapes for ease, ease of access, that's probably fine. In my manual, I only have four of them tabbed. I have the W shapes, the channels, the angles, and the WTs. That's the only ones I have tabbed. Uh, if you wanted to tab more, that's fine, but I think that's probably enough to get you through the vast majority of, uh, of this class. Um, for tension member design, um, it's pretty straightforward. So we compute our, or determine our factored load on the tension member. We then have two design parameters, uh, a gross area for design and a radius of gyration for design. And then we then use those parameters to select a shape. Now, note that if we're in design and I did not give you the length of the member or I told you not to worry about slenderness, then don't worry about computing our design because you don't have anything to compute off of. Just select your member based off this. Um, but given those parameters, you select a member that at least has those properties or higher, and then analyze that member to verify its performance. I say in particular here, the net section fracture limit state, if we are considering block shear, you need to analyze that too, um, and then summarize the results and compute the efficiency. And like, uh, 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 the price is right. If your efficiency is 90% or greater, just like what you get on spinning the wheel, that's good enough for, for stopping your iterations. If your efficiency is over one, you need to back a shape down and go again. If your efficiency is really, really low, select a lighter shape uh, uh, and, and, uh, and reiterate. Block shear capacity. So this equation does not match specifically what's listed in the spec, because if you remember, I rewrote it to make it a little easier to navigate. So I split out the tensile components and the shear components. The shear components are the minimum of shear yielding or shear fracture. Um, and I have all of the terms uh, defined uh, below. One of the things I'll say is that if you look, you can match all these terms up here. So for example, here's an AGB, here's an ANB. There is no AGT anywhere in this expression, but there is an ANT. You can't calculate the net area without calculating the gross area. So that's why they're, they're both listed there. So you basically need to compute all four, the gross and net area and tension, the gross and net area and shear, uh, and plug and chug into your, in your block shear capacity expression. Uh, finally, threaded rods. So we can, does, we can actually derive an expression for the minimum bar diameter pretty easily. You all just used this on the homework assignment you just submitted today. Um, the hard part, hard part, is getting the load. But once you get the load, you get the load, compute DBN or DBMIN and just select a bar diameter. It's pretty easy. It's because there's only one limit state uh, when looking at a threaded rod. It's just the, the um, tensile rupture or net section fracture, if you were, of the rod. Um, and that's it. That is, um, that is exam one. That's what's going to be on the exam. So I'm going to... Now sort of shut up and see if anybody has any questions. I'm happy to go back and look at stuff, look at notes, concepts. The floor is yours. Anything about the exam making you nervous? Anything you want to look at again? Want to take it now? No. <laughs> Let's do it. I might well bring them off. I wouldn't be giving you enough time either. I'm going to be fair. I'd be messed up if I said, no, nah, let's just do it now. You hate that. I'm giving a couple of those exams more where I'm like, I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> I remember the first steel design exam I gave the class as they were leaving. It was like, 
what the heck was that, man? And then, and then, and then the average on the exam was like an 81. So it was fine. Like, it's okay. Kind of like our first deformables exam. <laughs> we'll be hearing about this for years. <laughs> for years. No, we just did study. I did. Oh, that's I'm gonna move on. To <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move on. Man, you all. Here's the thing. I think you all are having fun with this at this point. So. I don't even remember the exam as much as I remember the. Uh, the, the way it left. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, like, the, the lecture and... Well, well, what was it? It was like, okay, Dr. Mike's not pulling up the slides. Okay, he's sitting on the table. He's pulling out a book. <laughs> oh, sits, oh, this sits is down. <laughs> this sits, is bad. He <laughs> sits down, crosses his leg over, pulls out his little book, flips it over. And he's goes, giving us... He's, he's, so. he's giving us the professor look. Okay, and here's the professor look. Okay, it's, it's this. I think you might have taken your glasses off. I might have taken them off. Sat on the table. <laughs> yeah, real <laughs> serious. Yeah. He, took him off. He, crossed, he crossed that leg over, and he goes... Well, <laughs> and it just went downhill from there. Like, well, Thirty-five years of teaching. Never... He's like, this is the worst. This is the worst class I've ever had. <laughs> That's what he said after that. <laughs> the funny thing yeah. is, like, I got all these. I, I got all these comments on the emails. Like, he took our formula sheets away after that. But the, the, the averages went up like twenty points. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably 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 for the better. I think we remember it because it happens in every class. But when you think it's you. So it's like we were both shocked. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's not, it happened in Phoenix class, or not in Dr. Michael. Let's set me loose. So <laughs> we we got through it together. We oh, got through it. The mission was successful. There we go. Okay, we made it. <laughs> I'm sure there was some some like. Uh, Buy a medical suits class. Thank God I don't have to have him again. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love my job. Y'all gotta have some questions about steel design. That's a certain detail that um, I would like to hear you give. I don't know how to really go about it. It's I'll try. <laughs> it's remember when we did that L shape. We're doing like the net area for growth section yielding, and we it was the folding. Like, it's like you're trying to draw a three D model, and you're trying to calculate the lengths in between. For um, stagger. Uh, I'm trying to see which one it was. Um, it was like a dotted line halfway through it. Was that? What, does it matter? This one. No. Yeah, this one. Yeah, that's it. That four point five and all those lengths. Mm -hmm. You want to go over how to get those lengths again? Probably. Sure. Let me let me do this. Let me just copy this image here. So, okay. So first off, um, okay. So the first thing to keep in mind, okay is this is an L5 by 5, okay? So, all right. Before we start breaking out samurai swords and lightsabers and all that, let's just recognize that this dimension is 5 inches, and this dimension is 5 inches, okay? Let me, actually, let me let me do this. Hold on, let me do it. Let me do it a different way. All right, so All right, let me make it kind of tall and put it up here so I can scoop some dimensions in below. Hmm. 
Would you care making a five by six so we know which side is what? What do you, what do you mean? Because they're five by five, so when we go through it, I may not know what side is talking about what side. I'm not. That, give, give me one sec. Okay. Yeah, it'll, it'll make sense in about 32 seconds. 34. <laughs> okay. So what I'm doing, just so you're aware, what I'm doing is I'm redrawing this. Okay. So if we look at the top leg, okay, so I have one hole right here, okay? And so what I'm drawing is the red is the edge of the hole and the blue is the center, right? Okay. Now, based on my schematic, okay, this dimension here is three inches, right? So if this dimension here... is three inches, what's this dimension? It's two, right? So that's two, two. So far so good? Now let's do the same thing over here for these, okay? So we have, we have a hole here and a hole here, okay? So that, and that, okay? Now, based on the schematic, this is two, and this is one and a half, so if this is two, and this is one and a half, what's that bottom? One and a half, one and a half right? So far, so good? Okay, so let's just Put a pin in this, but recognize that this is the angle as it is fully, fully schematic. This is the full schematic. So far, so good? All right. So I'm just going to put a box in this and say, we'll come back to that. Okay. All right. Now, over here... Let's draw the angle again, okay? Two holes here. Oops. One hole here, okay? Now, the trick that I had done was, okay, we had, this is five inches. This dimension here is five inches, okay? The trick was I'm going to samurai sword or lightsaber right there, and I'm going to take this stem and stick it up there, okay? So my question for you is what is this dimension right here? What is that dimension? Four and a half inches. Four and a half inches. Does that make sense? Because... From the tip to the back of the angle is five inches, but that's a half inch thick. So from here to here, four and a half. With me so far? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a plate, right? There's where the cut is, right? Okay. And there's one hole up here. Let's redo that. One hole here, one hole here. And the entire height is not 10 inches, it's nine and a half. With me so far? Okay. Now. <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat a little bit. Okay. So here's my schematic, right? Okay. And let's look at this equivalent plate. So let's get these two 
and say that we agree with all of this. Do you agree with what I have here on, on the screen? Okay, so now let's start filling in dimensions. Okay, so I have a center here, center here, center here. Okay, so I'm asking you, what's that dimension? One and a half. One and a half. What's this dimension here? What is that dimension? Two inches, right? All right, so my question to you then is, all right, this is where I cut the plate, right? That was where I cut. But I'm just asking you, tell me, what is that entire dimension? What is it? What's well, nine and a half minus two minus that minus that? This and this is three, right? Three and two is five. Nine and a half minus five makes that four and a half. Does, does that make sense? So if I go back to this, ah, so if I go back to this down here, right? So here's my schematics, right? I'm saying that this dimension from here to here is four and a half inches. Just as this one is one and a half, one and a half, and two. Does that make sense? Yeah. That, that's all we were doing. And now it's just a plate like any other. So, you know, we have net area path one, which just goes like that. Net area path two, right? That's it. So then you just treat it like you would any work, any, any other problem. Does that answer your question? Was that a valuable exercise? I seem like I had a lot of head nodding throughout that. I feel like there was other people that were like, I'm glad he said that. So. Oh, you got to have more questions than that. Make me work for a little. Yes? You have a small question. You see how, like, the... The dimension is measured from the ends, like the middle of the, the hole. Yes. Yes. I, that line is supposed to be there. I, I don't know what. What? On that one. This one right here. Yeah. I, I, for, I remember you saying, like, that there was, like, a dimension where you measure from the middle and the dimension where you from the outside of the hole. I did? I don't know. Not for this exam. They're, they're, so we are going to have some dimensions that go from the edge of the bowl to the edge of the plate later during the second exam, but not for this one. Th th there's a very specific terminology for those, and we're going to talk about that Monday or Wednesday. It, it'll be, it's, it's called the clear edge distance, but it won't, it won't affect this exam at all. Uh, so I'm just thinking about the like, block tear-off thing where it's like the whole, you know, each bowl hole and you only did like half of the other one or something. Come on. The, are you talking yeah. about block shear? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So for block shear, um, maybe, maybe it's block shear. Um, we talk about like this problem here? Oh, yeah. yeah, so whenever you, um, let's go here. So I'll draw a big um, horizontal line to indicate like a separation. Because this is all going in the, um, the class notebook, so everybody will be able to see these. All right, so whenever we're looking at the block shear failure path for this problem, if we're looking at, you know, this block ripping out, right, so this is the chunk of steel That's ripping out, okay? 
So this path right here, this is the path that's experiencing shear. And so the net area in shear is going to equal the gross area in shear minus one, two, three, and a half bolt holes. Right? Whereas this path here is experiencing tension. So the net area in tension is going to be the gross area in tension minus how many bolt holes? One and a half. Because we have the whole the full diameter here and half a diameter here. So So yeah, so that's going to be how we compute that. And that. Does that make sense? Everybody else good with that? And I have the solution posted now for homework 2.8. So I'll show you, since, since we just turned that in, I can go ahead and pull that up, or that solution just went live, I can show you that solution. Um, okay, so... For that problem, okay, so what we were looking at was a W section connected by the flanges. So its separation mechanism is going to look like this. So what I did is I computed the capacity per block. So for this problem, for each block, I'm removing, so here's a view of the block. I'm removing one, two, three and a half holes for shear, but I'm only removing one half hole for tension. So instead of three and a half and one and a half, it's three and a half and 0 0.5. So I get all my areas, and what I'm doing is computing the capacity per block, okay? But for the entire member, there's one, two, three, four blocks. So what I get is I get Rn for a block is something like 150 kips, but there's four blocks. So four blocks is 605 kips, but then don't forget your fee value of 0.75. So the actual capacity was something like 454.8 kips. Does that make sense? Yeah, W section is connected via the flanges. You got four blocks of block shear. Did this make sense? Is that how you approach that? You just take your answer and just take off work again? I think it's easier. The other way is to try and calculate all the areas and subtract like 14 holes for <laughs> shear. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> you did that? I just multiplied everything but four all the way through. You can do that. There's that, like, you can, that is a valid way of doing it. Just don't multiply by four at the end. Right, right. I, yeah. I want the yellow block to be what you got. If you got the yellow answer, you do it whichever way you want. Um, you silly little willy. I personally think it's easier to just handle a block at a time and multiply by the number of blocks, but that's that's the way the brain does it. I just didn't think of that. That's okay. I have had um, pro I, I won't I'll tell you, this is, I'm not doing this on the exam. But I have had problems where I did this. So it was like you have a plate, and then you have a member framing into that plate. And so, like, the connection, like, looks like this. And so the block shear path kind of like looks like that, and so there's more holes on one side than there is on the other. I'm not, I'm not doing that. You did that for an exam. What's that? You did that for an exam. They did okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, they yelled at me about something else, but you're not getting that, that trick either. <laughs> I will answer, I'm surprised nobody's asking this question, so I will ask it for you. Are we going to have to do a block shear problem for a staggered bolt arrangement? No. That's going to put any ideas in there. I already made them. 
made the exam, so. <laughs> I see it. It's a good question. No. I, no, I, I, let me correct that. You can see it in two days. Nice try. No, um, but I'll tell you that if you were to have block shear for a staggered path, like the way I do it is just add the stagger factors for your net area intention the way you normally do it. So. But I'm not going to make you do that. Will we have a problem where we have to do all, where we have to list all of the paths like we did for that one homework? All oh, the, no. I mean, that, 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 let, me be, let me qualify that statement. Can you have a staggered bolt path? Yes. yes. Does a staggered connection have multiple failure paths? Yes. yes. Are you going to have one that has 11 failure paths? No. But you are going to potentially be responsible for one that has multiple. And my, my response to that is you need to find the one with the smallest net area. Okay. So if you get that, I'm, I'm fine. Okay, cool. So we will have a staggered factor problem on the exam. It just won't be... You may have a staggered factor exam on the set pack. You, you may have a staggered factor problem on the exam. You might not. You try to trick it. I'm not going to tell you what's on the exam. I'm saying that if you have a staggered problem, you got to get the smallest net area. That, that's what I'm saying. Are you going to do tributary area on the exam? Maybe. <laughs> yes. I got to this last one. Yes. I like it. It's actually just a group change. Right. Like, that's all steel design is. <laughs> what did I tell you? I told you all this on day one. I said this is not going to be like structural analysis where the end of the answer is x equals 4. It's this. This is it, you know. It's very sink your teeth into real world. Although it wouldn't actually bite the members because it probably hurt your teeth. What's that? You have to bite it to a grade. It's 836. Isn't that used to be a test for soil or rocks in the back of the good old days? Yeah. Um, Do for steam. It might, it might be a test. All right. Any other questions? We celebrate on Friday. I will see you then. Let's go first and